Dear Tai, dear Sangha, greetings, beloved ones. Thank you for your practice and your presence here for the fifth session in our short journey of exploring, really, the Sangha within. The purpose of this entire process is, is to enrich our awareness of our inner Sangha help us recognize the possibility of offering gratitude and appreciation uh, to our inner Sangha and to cultivate our relationships with our inner Sangha in ourselves, with the noble community within. We have a great song in our Plum Village chant book, chant really on the three refuges. And really this entire series is about the song, especially taking refuge in the Sangha. So I'll read a few lines for you of this uh, beautiful chant. Dwelling in the refuge of Sangha, shining light that supports me, keeping my practice free of obstruction. So the practice here of bringing our inner Sangha to awareness, our inner community into focus. And our inner Sangha may be within our larger community that we may be aware of in our inner life. But I want to focus your attention on the, the Sangha, the noble community within, where you can take refuge and find the energies and memories and thoughts and speech of compassion, of wisdom, and of peace. So it's all about, for me, who is it in my inner life that provides this nourishment? And if there's someone in my inner community, um, that everybody, another way to say this, everyone in my inner community that I am aware of I do not invite to be in my inner Sangha. They're just in the community at large, which is wonderful. Um, these can co-workers, friends, neighbors, childhood developments, et cetera. Uh, but it's really important to know who your core community is inside. Life, as you know, is not so easy. <laughs> it is beautiful and wonderful but also difficult. And so the best thing is to surround ourselves, just like we do externally with Sangha in this noble community of energy and support, do the same thing inside of our own hearts and minds. Fill it with the energies of people who help you practice compassion, wisdom, and a noble life, a life of non-harming. So take a look at the list you've been building over these last several sessions. And the thing I appreciate about what I've learned so far about working with my inner Sangha is it can change depending on what's happening in my life. When I was on the streets, uh, in different cities across the U.S. during the Civil Rights Movement, I had a different inner Sangha than I do right now. My inner Sangha then was Martin Luther King, who's still around in my life, but Stokely Carmichael, J. Rapp Brown, many, many other characters, um, Fannie Mae, I'm remembering some people, Rosa Parks, who's still with me, but I'm at that time, they were prominent in the voices that nourished me. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't say it very well, but that's what I'm trying to say. So you're looking for those voices, those memories, uh, those expressions that nourish you on the path. But because the path is alive, your inner community must also be alive. There may be different people who are, you need to hear, depending on what's happening in your life, conditions you're experiencing, the changes that you're going through, 
the age you are, all of these things are impermanent and flowing. And so your inner community must also be understood as a flow of awareness, a flow of relationship, a flow of connection, but not a permanent institution. Um, so if you've identified that, a few people from that list, use your understanding of the five skandhas to reflect on the quality of your relationships. And you can pick one just so you learn how to do this. Pick one person. Um, I have done this with many people. I have done it, most obviously, most recently with Thai in my life. But what I mean is following how your body feels inside when you're in touch with this person, in touch with this memory, in touch with this voice. So follow that. Find out where it is in your body. Where is it located? Uh, does it bring? Does it open up a capsule of joy? Does it open up hope? Does it open up despair or fear? Be aware of what opens up in your body, in your nervous system. Does it ease you into a state of calm and peacefulness while still alert to life? How is it? How does any of these voices or memories impact your feelings in the sense of uh, pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral? Know that information from your connections to your inner Sangha. Um, your perceptions, how you see things, your views, your understandings of the world and life itself. Your habit energies, your mental formations. How does any of these, if you want to shift a mental energy or a habit, uh, do you have, are you surrounded with the right energies and the right people and the right memories to do that as well? And then consciousness itself, which this is all about in terms of the storehouse and all the levels of consciousness that comes up to mind and back to the skandhas, body, feelings, etc. Eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, all of that wisdom. Bring that to bear on your inner life, which I know you're already doing. But at this time in the world, we need to enhance everything we're doing to save our planet and to save ourselves. And that enhancement comes from inside out. And Plum Village has a great uh, little program on the way out is in. That's what we're talking about during these sessions. So take a few notes. Do what is easy for you to do in this process of any of these steps. Don't be intimidated. If it's not easy for you to do, you can stop it. Do what you can do and come back later. So this is like a paint palette of five sessions. So see, see yourself as an artist here, not as a mathematician. And you'll have more fun. Thank you.